Good morning. Welcome to chapel at the Institute of Lutheran Theology. We are celebrating today the anticipation of Reformation Sunday. Timothy J. Swenson here, Dean of Chapel, and it's good to be able to bring you God's Word today. As we begin, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Join with me in our, invocate, in our litany. Come, behold the works of the Lord. How he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Join with me in the prayer of the day. Father in heaven, you have poured out your Holy Spirit so that we, your people, may be faithful. Keep us steadfast in your word, comforted and protected by its presence, and hold us in your peace, which comes in the salvation wrought by Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, You will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The Son remains forever. So, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Greetings to you. Greetings on this day that the Lord has made a day for us to rejoice and be glad. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from His Son our Lord Jesus Christ. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We think we know something of freedom, we Americans. Conceived, born, or delivered to this land of liberty and justice for all, we Americans stand confident in the freedoms granted by the Constitution of the United States, venerable document that it is. Americans of all stripes, the Christian right, the Christian left, even atheists, have received the benefits of liberty won and liberty preserved. We have come to rely on it, confident of it, confident that it will be ours, and we rest on its laurels. We are not much different than those Jews to whom Jesus spoke. They too were resting on their laurels, or should we say, resting on Abraham's laurels. Those Jews designated by John as the Jews who had believed in him, emphasis on the had, they couldn't comprehend Jesus' pronouncement of freedom. They protested against it. They held out their genetics as proof of their freedom. Offspring of Abraham, they interjected. Never enslaved to anyone, they replied. What do you mean? You will become free, they protested. Those Jews had become so inured to their bondage, it appeared as freedom 
to them. From Abraham, they inherited a promise. Abraham's seed, his offspring, his one descendant understood as the Messiah, would be a blessing upon all the nations of the world. That blessing would be the world's salvation. Abraham believed, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. All the children born from Abraham possessed that promise and the righteousness of faith it brought. But along came Moses and the people, and they succumbed to temptation. The words of description delivered by Moses which depicted life under the promise, a promise reiterated in these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of bondage. Those words telling what life lived under the promise would look like tempted the people. They succumbed to coveting a righteousness of their own making their own achieving, a righteousness of their own obedience, a righteousness of the law, rather than the righteousness reckoned upon them by their Lord. God's people fell into a bondage, a bondage to the law as their righteousness. In that bondage, they could not hear the truth, a truth the Apostle Paul had to speak centuries hence. Through the law comes knowledge of sin. Knowledge of sin, not a path to righteousness. Jesus speaks to Jews resting on their laurels, completely oblivious to how their freedom had become bondage, oblivious to how their liberty of faith in the promise had become captivity in the law, oblivious to the difference between receiving a righteousness reckoned unto them by their Lord and a righteousness achieved by them through their works. They were enslaved by their sin, a sin which was their lack of faith. Out of that unfaithfulness, they committed sins which drove them deeper into the sin of unfaithfulness. So Jesus declared, truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. So too. Does Jesus speak to you, you Americans, you Christians, you who rest the, on the laurels of freedom brought forth from the past, you who are blind, blind to the bondage which has enslaved you. Jesus speaks to you in your bondage, saying, Abide in my word, be my disciples, know the truth, be Free. And like those Jews who had believed in him, your protests fly. I have kept your commandments. I am your disciple. I do know the truth. I am free. And just there, in the midst of your protests, you reveal how deep your bondage is. You fulfill the truth. Of Jesus' words, everyone who practices sin is slave to sin. What is your sin? What is your slavery? Like those ancient Jews, your sin is resting on your laurels to rest on something other than the Word of God, Jesus Christ, Him crucified and Him alone, to rest on yesterday's faith. You have placed yourselves as the subject of your sentences. You have held up your keeping, your discipleship, your knowledge of the truth, your version of freedom, all of which belong to the past, all of which are not new every morning. Faith is not cumulative. Faith, obedience is not additive. Yesterday's faith Yesterday's obedience 
are not a foundation upon which you can build your build for your faith today, your obedience today, yesterday's faith, yesterday's obedience are but sand upon which no house will stand. They are a tower of Babel, evidence of your coveting a place in heaven. As we look forward to Reformation Sunday and the event which it commemorates, we would do well to remember Martin Luther's rediscovery of this ancient truth regarding bondage and freedom. Through the many centuries between Luther and those ancient times of Jesus addressing the Jews who had believed in him, through those many centuries the church had fallen into bondage. Merit, a slavery to the accumulation of merit. God's people bound to a treadmill piling yesterday's faith with yesterday's obedience, accumulating merit until the accumulation lifted them high into that coveted heavenly place. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, as Luther abided in the Word of God, he rediscovered the ancient truth regarding bondage and freedom. The truth that all the world, all the people of the world live not in freedom, but in two very different kinds of bondage. People, me, you, we live as slaves bound to sin under the wrath of God, or we live in the freedom of being bound to Jesus Christ under the grace of God. The depths of our bondage to sin must be revealed to us every day, every hour, or at least in our weekly hearing of the word proclaimed. Without the depths of our bondage to sin being revealed, there is no lament for freedom, for liberty, for release from slavery and delivery to sonship and daughterhood in the household of God. Unless the Son sets us free, we have no freedom. There is no Christian liberty without being bound to the only one who is truly free, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became flesh for us, is free from sin, for he has died to sin. He is free from the law, for it was the law which convicted, sentenced, and executed him. He is free from the power of the devil, for the devil's lies cannot stand the light of his truth. He is free from death, because God would not stand for sinners. Sinners like you, sinners like me, sinners having the final word. So God raised Jesus from the dead, destroying the power of death by the resurrection of the dead. Only being bound to such a one who is truly free, free from sin, free from the law, free from the devil's lies, free from death. Only being bound to such a one delivers freedom to you and I. When the Son sets you free, by binding him to himself, you are truly free. Your life of faith is lived amidst these ongoing episodes of discontinuity, of bondage and freedom, of slavery and liberty. You are God's people, and long ago God's people were taught in their desert wanderings that the mercies of God must be new every day. There in the desert, no food to be had by their own hands. God's people trusted their Lord to open his hand. Every day manna fell from the heavens, scattered across the sand, ready for the gathering. Daily the people gathered it. There was no storing up. There could be no accumulation. They soon found yesterday's manna was no good for today. Wormy, rotten, and stinky, it taught them to wait, to wait upon the Lord. 
to wait upon the Lord and his daily delivery of their bread of life. But they did have surcies. So they could rest on the Sabbath God gave them double the day before and preserved it for the Sabbath day. You, who are God's people today, you live bound under the wrath of God. You live in the stench of yesterday's faith. You live with protest on your lips. We've never been enslaved. You rest upon the laurels of yesterday's faith and just so are bound beneath the law and sin and death and the power of the devil. Now hear this. You who have ears, listen. You who are God's people today, so that you may be bound to Jesus Christ and live under the grace of God and not under his wrath, I declare to you that you have been joined to him, bound to him in your baptism of water and the word. I declare to you that Jesus Christ has become your bread of life delivered anew each time you gather at the Lord's table and are fed with his body and blood given and shed for you. I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you killed, but God raised from the dead to be your Lord of life. I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, the forgiveness of which repents you of yesterday's faith, cleanses you from its stench by washing you anew in the blood of the Lamb. The mercies of the Lord have been poured out upon you anew this day. Receive the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of today's faith. Faith in Christ who is your life, your manna, your bread of life, so that you might have faith in being reckoned righteous by your Lord. Bound to Christ, you are bound to be free, free indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we pray today, I'll invite you to respond with Lord in your mercy, and your response is, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, continue to send us preachers of Christ, Him crucified and Him alone, that we might receive your mercies new every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, as you establish us in Jesus Christ and His new creation, draw forth from us such fruit that our neighbors benefit and rejoice at their abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, draw forth from the students here at ILT the best of their efforts, that they would better proclaim your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, place your hand of protection around Cody and Maya Mills and their families. Comfort them in their grief and grant them the consolation and consul conversation of the saints, so that they would be held in the faith of Jesus Christ and the love of those who bear his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father in heaven, grant to those of us at the Institute of Lutheran Theology, students, faculty, and staff, the joy of useful and fruitful labor, Bring the Institute to full flower as that place where your word blossoms. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.